everyone, it's Desiree, and here we go. It's time for Spellbinders, and we are going to start off with the large die, and I'm going to combine it with the 3D embossing folder. I thought it had a great backdrop. <coughs> Excuse me. And I do apologize. I don't have it here, because I kind of did that in midstream as I was making the card, because that's what we do. The large die is called Floral Bunny Basket, and it's got a bunny bun. I love that when that happens. And the embossing folder is called Easter Egg Hunt. So, absolutely precious. I have a piece of light blue cardstock, and yes, I added a green oxide to the bottom. Don't always have to have a white piece or an ivory piece of cardstock to add your color to it. I just wanted to make sure that I had saturated blue. I wanted it all blue in that background um, and just the pop of the green along the bottom. So I'm gonna grab my Spellbinders Platinum 6. I've got my A platform. I've got my 3D embossing folder with my cardstock inside and I'm using the D adapter plate. That is the sandwich. Uh, when you have a Spellbinders 3D um, embossing folder and you get this beautiful, beautiful image. These would look absolutely done. Emboss it with watercolor paper and then add watercolors to it to make all the eggs just shine. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive to get this onto my card base. We are going to be making a 5 by 7 card. This die set just fills... Um, absolutely fills a five by seven card base. Here are all the pieces and we are going to show all of the inking that I did. I'm going to be using blending brushes um, in different sizes. So for the Lily of the Valleys there, at least that's what I'm going to call them, I'm just adding a little bit of yellow to the bottom of it just to knock that white back just a little bit. I am using my Distress inks for this. I'm gonna be using my finger daubers to put on a darker shade of yellow when it comes to the tulips. Now the tulips are layered, so it's just two pieces. Um, now you can do three, and that's, that's what you're supposed to do. You have the base, and then you have the two pieces that come up on top. I'm choosing to just use the base, have two bases, and then I'm putting the layer one on each base. I hope that made sense. So one base, two layers. That's how they're supposed to go together. You guys know me, I'm a rebel. Stretch your dies, get a different look. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> For the basket, again, using Vintage Photo, Yes, had to have vintage photo on that. I'm taking a piece of craft cardstock, adding that vintage photo to the edges. And this die is a can be a two section. So you have the outline, which I cut that from black to get that color to come through the basket, and then put the centerpiece in, and then ran that through my die cutting machine to get the basket. What I love with all of these dies, they are all embossed. They you get all of these images and embossed areas for each of these. I'm now with the green, with the leaves, the large ones, I cut that from three different colors of green and I'm adding a rustic wilderness to the base of it. But again, you can use any color that you have, whether it's dye ink or oxides, whatever inks that you have. I'm using one for all of these green shades. I'm not, you know, changing it up in any way and I'm just coming in from the bottom and swiping up with my finger dauber nothing fancy going on here so now that we have all of our pieces inked we're gonna start putting those together so again you can see I'm only using one layer for each base I've cut it twice but I cut it from two different color cardstocks again the base 
and these two pieces that I'm putting on top should go on to one to get that full effect and dimension of the tulip. Somebody will tell me, you did it wrong. I didn't do it wrong. I intentionally did it wrong. <laughs> Again, stretching out that look. Um, what I love about all of these pieces is I dug into my scraps. I just love it when I can do that. For the carrots, this little piece, there's a little notch that actually cuts out. So I'm pushing in that little tuff coming out of the top of the carrot. And I am doubling up each of the carrots. I want them to have some stability. Also for the Lily of Valleys, I'm going to double those up as well. These are extremely dainty. Um, and again, guys, you know me, if you've been here before, I layer and I layer and I tuck and I push and then it's, you know, it, it can, you know, damage can occur and we don't want that to happen. I'm going to pop out the little flowers and attach them and just have fun sending those all over. And then we're gonna take care of the last one. I did not double up on these flowers. I had kind of an idea where they were going to go. And because they are so dainty, they were gonna kind of sit in the front so I would be able to adhere them to something that's in the background. We're gonna put our basket together. I die cut the handle twice to give it more strength and I'm going to put that down onto the black background and then I'm going to place the craft on top of that so I'll be able to sandwich the handle um, right underneath that piece and then we have I die cut this three times again just to get some dimension it's great with die cuts. The more times you die cut one piece and layer it on top of the main piece, you're going to be adding that dimension. So you really don't have to add ink to your pieces if you didn't want to. It's going to create that shadow. Again, all kinds of different ways to get a certain look of what you're looking for. Do you have to add all of this dimension? Absolutely not absolutely not. Um, by having the different colors of cardstock, you're going to get that look. Here I'm putting the bunny together. Now what's great with Spellbinders when they have dies that are like this, that you're building a character or an image, the, uh, the pieces underneath are embossed. So you know where to put these pieces in place. Um, so you can just, they're giving you a guide right on um, the piece. Getting the ears ready. I love a bunny's bum. I just love a bunny's bum. It's just absolutely adorable. <laughs> it's just, and this seems to be the year. Um, with a lot of products that are coming out, I'm seeing lots of bunny bums, which is awesome. They're just cute. I'm putting in the little tiny pads on the back paws there, and now we're going to add the ears coming out um, up on top. All of this, I do use my liquid adhesive. I think um, I am a liquid adhesive fan um, because the bond is strong. Now we're just gonna have fun. I am gonna put glue towards the bottom of the basket because then I'll be able to tuck in uh, the stems, the carrots, all of those bottom pieces, it'll give me a little bit of playroom to push them down into that place. We're going to start with the Lily of the Valley. Again, having that, and you can see I'm only putting glue down the base of the stems. These tall stems with the big circle on top or dot, those are for the tulips. So I cut a couple of those, um, but the second one I will be cutting down and using it, not that you'll see it, um, but using it for a third. Fun 
For the bunny, I am going to add a couple layers of double-sided foam squares. Because of that lip of the basket, it is kind of high. I need that bunny just to be leveled when it goes down onto the card. You could also use scraps of cardstock there as well. You don't have to use up your foam tape for that. Um, just grab some scraps cardstock and just keep adding layers until you're even with that. Here I'm starting to put my tulips in place. And you can see how I split that one strand or that one stem. Um, to get to. Now again, not sure if it was going to be seen or not, so I'm working from the bottom up. Now I'm just having fun with the leaves, making sure to layer a dark with a light um, so that it'll look like it's a shadow. If I have to tuck something behind, I can do that. When I'm doing a piece like this, setting a scene, I always make sure that I'm putting glue towards the center of the piece because this way I can put something alongside or I can tuck something under. Once the piece is together, that's when I'll say, okay, let's tack this down, let's tack this down. And just by lifting up that corner and because I have that fine tip on my glue bottle, I'm able to get up underneath. It does not have to be perfect when it comes to that. I did not glue the handle down. You can see I've got pieces on top. I've got pieces down below. So it's going to get trapped within all of those pieces. We're now going to get those carrots in because that's what the bunny's going for. I'm just loving the bunny. I love this bunny. Um, just to have some fun with that. Now, once I had that carrot in place... I added a, I wanted to add a double-sided foam square. Yeah, it wasn't going to work. So was able to peel that off and get that glued down. So the bunny is now there. I'm going to create my own sentiment. So I grabbed a piece of black cardstock and I'm grabbing my white jelly roll pen. The trick to a jelly roll is to start it up. I like to use my index finger. That is the warmest finger. Um, that gets it going. And a very light hand as you're writing or drawing, sketching with this. I'm just using capital letters and I'm adding dots at the end of the lines where I want them to be. And that is my sentiment. So when you don't have a sentiment, one, you don't ever have to add a sentiment. Why cover up all of this beautiful work that you've done on the front of your card? But we all can write. And I know somebody's going to say, I have horrible handwriting. Okay. You have your handwriting. It's not horrible. Have some fun with it. And create your own sentiment for the front. So that's what I chose to do. I added a brad to the back. I'm going to use my double-sided film tape to make sure this gets stuck down. Lots of texture going on there. And then I'm going to add the last. I know it's going to be an even number of tulips there. I know. I know. But that's okay. I think it looks great and it helped to balance out. And you can see where I was just tucking some glue underneath. So that is our card. A bright, cheerful, with a bunny bun card for Easter. As always, I hope you enjoyed um, today's project featuring the Spellbinders large die and 3D embossing folders. Remember, all of their monthly subscriptions are listed down below, um, especially the two that I just used today. But remember, they combine a lot of their subscriptions into packs, into packages where you get a better deal. It's absolutely amazing, and I love the fact that all the products for each month work together which I think is wonderful. If you have any questions, make sure you link those down below as well, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up, ring the bell. Hopefully you'll get notified by YouTube. You never know. It's what they feel like doing, but I'd love to have you here. And remember, 
The art is yours. You are creating it. So have fun with it. Don't stress. Enjoy the process. That's all that matters. Don't worry about what everybody else does. Get an idea from somebody and just take off with it for your own. But enjoy the process. And most of all, always be creative, guys. And I will see you soon with the next Spellbinders Club. Till then.